In this video, we'll take a look at the safety monitor. This is the first page you'll see when you log into your administrator panel. It's where all of your documentation and certifications are stored so that you can review and report on them all in one place. This report allows you to search for specific documents or certifications and display different reporting views based on a set of criteria like date range, form or certification name, location name, worker name, completion status, or a combination of any or all of these. You can also use the customized layout menu to add further viewing options like layout, grouping options, general content, and scheduled forms. Before we get too far into all the different criteria options, I want to highlight the search bar at the top of the page. You can use this to search for form and certification names, worker names, location names, and even the data in the label field of your documents. On the left side of your safety monitor, you'll see a column with the titles of your safety monitor views. This column can be divided into sections by selecting Add Section in the bottom left corner of the page. You can give your section a name and select Save to create it in your monitor. Now you can click and drag this section to reorganize your filter view column. You can also click and drag each filter view from one section to another if you like. These sections can always be renamed or deleted. Just keep in mind that if you delete a section, any of your filter views that are saved there are also deleted. So if you want to keep them, just drag them to another section before you delete the old one. Okay, now let's take a look at document monitor views. Let's create a new filter view for form completed this week. First, select Add View in the bottom left corner of the page. In the New View window, give your filter view a name, then select the section you want to add this view to. You can also choose to copy an existing view if you have another filter view that's similar to what you'd like to see in this one. If you leave this box unchecked, the default view is all of your documents signed in the last 30 days. Finally, select Document and then Create. When you're reporting on documents, you can see unread indicators to the left of any documents that you haven't opened yet. These will show for any completed forms, resources, or follow-up forms, and they're user-specific, so any other admins in your account will have different unread indicators than you do. Next, let's take a look at the filtering options at the top of the page. First, we have a date filter. When you select the date filter, you'll see a few pre-made dynamic date ranges. These ranges will move with you as the date advances to keep your data up to date. And at the top of the window, you also have the option to create your own custom date range using a calendar. These custom date ranges are static and will stay the same as time goes on. The completion status filter allows you to choose what type of forms you'd like to show. Completed means that the form or follow-up has been filled out and signed, and that it wasn't scheduled ahead of time. Completed on time means that the form was scheduled and your worker completed their document on or before the due date. Completed late means just that, the worker missed the due date on their scheduled form, but they did complete the form. Scheduled means that the form is currently scheduled and the notification has been sent, but the form is not completed yet. Pending means that a follow-up form has been created and assigned to a worker, but it also hasn't been completed or signed yet. Overdue means that the notification for a scheduled form or a pending follow-up was sent and the due date has passed and the worker still has the ability to complete it. Missed means that the scheduled form notification was sent and the due date has passed and the worker did not have the ability to complete it after the due date. Finally, at the bottom of the filter, you can choose to include the cancelled filter. This means that a form or signature was scheduled, but before it was completed, an admin cancelled it. The document filter allows you to choose which forms, resources, or follow-ups you want to see in your view. You can even choose whether you want to include deleted form templates or not. The location filter allows you to choose which locations you want to include in your report. And like the form filter, you can choose if you want to include inactive locations or not. 
The worker filter allows you to choose which workers you'd like to display. Like the form filter and the location filter, you can choose if you want to include inactive workers or not. The company filter allows you to dictate which companies you would like included in your view. The first option on this list will always be your company. The document type filter allows you to filter for all forms, resources, or follow-up forms. And finally, the company type filter allows you to dictate what types of external companies you'd like to show in this view. Need a little bit more detail in your view? No problem. Let's select Customize Layout to explore the different viewing options. The first option here is Layout. With this selector, admins can change their filter view from the default list view to an inbox view where the selected form is shown in a smaller preview window on the right side of the monitor. You also have the option to choose Chart or Chart and List. These options add a customizable chart to the top of your view. Chart and List also includes the standard list of documents underneath the chart. I'll go over chart setup in just a moment. Once the layout is chosen, you have the option to choose how to group your safety monitor. By default, the safety monitor is grouped by date, but you can choose either forms, locations, workers, date, form status, or companies. Next, you can choose how much data you want to see, either the first 10, 25, 50, or 100 items. Keep in mind that the more items you include, the longer your loading times might be. Next, you can choose whether you want to show all groups, empty groups only, or hide your empty groups. This can be used to exclude days that you weren't working, or to show workers or locations who have not filled out their documentation. Next, you can choose whether you want to see read documents, unread documents, or both. Then you can choose if the date you see in the monitor is the date the document was completed, or the date of the most recent signature. You can also choose to show the date that the form was uploaded, which may sound like the same thing as the date it was completed, but occasionally some of our customers will have their workers working in an area where they either don't have cellular connection or maybe just don't have cellular data on their device. So when they sync their device upon connecting to Wi-Fi, the date completed and the date uploaded can be different. Then we have the revision filter, which allows you to either show all of your documentation or only show the most recent revision of your forms. Next, you have the option to show the name of the signing worker and the company they work for, just the worker's name, or just the company's name. Keep in mind that if you don't use external companies, all of your forms will be labeled with your company name. Last in this window is the scheduled form selector. This menu allows to choose whether you want to show all forms and signatures, only scheduled forms, or only scheduled signatures. If you made any changes here, remember to select Apply to save your settings. Now if you chose a chart or chart and list view, there are a few settings that you should know about with your chart. First of all, if you're grouping by date, you'll see a selector in the top left corner of the chart for the window of time that you'd like to group your charts by. This includes day, week, month, and year. Next, you can choose what type of chart you'd like to use. In the top right corner of the chart, you'll see buttons that indicate the different types that are available. We have column, bar, line, and pie charts. Finally, when you have the chart set up the way you like it, if you'd like to share this chart in an email, a presentation, or anything else outside of SiteDocs, you can export this chart as a PDF, image, or CSV file. Okay, now let's take a look at certification monitor views. These are much like your document views, but instead of signed documents, you'll see your worker certifications. And the filtering options are a little bit different. So let's make a certification view. We'll select Add View, give it a title, choose your section, and then select Certifications. If you don't copy an existing view, the default view will show all certifications in your SiteDocs account. Most of the filters are the same as documents here. 
the different ones being certification name instead of document name, and the status filter shows expiry status. Expired means that your expiry date on the certification has passed. Expiring soon means that the expiry date is in the next 90 days. Active means that the expiry date is farther out than 90 days or there wasn't an expiry date entered at all. And archived means that an admin in your account has marked this certification as archived. In the customized layout menu, you'll see the option for grid in the layout menu. This will show your certification information alongside the image that's attached to the certification. If there's not an image uploaded, you'll see the option to upload a photo right here on the safety monitor. You can also choose to show all additional images if you'd like with the show image menu under the content section. Finally, when you have the filters and customizations set for the way you want them on any of your views, you can select the title at the top of the page to edit the name of this filter view if you'd like. A great feature of the safety monitor is the ability to save multiple filter views, so you don't need to apply the same filter multiple times. You can save up to 200 filter views in your safety monitor, and every admin in your account will get their own unique safety monitor. So when you create or edit your own filter views, no one else can see or accidentally change what you've created. We've put together a list of some popular filter views. You can find that in our help center. Please check out that article if you need any inspiration or tips on where to start. Now that we have some filter views set up, Let's check out the Scheduled Forms feature. Navigate to one of your filter views where you're tracking documents and select Schedule a Form in the top right-hand corner of the page. Next, we'll select a date from the calendar that we'd like this form to be completed by, as well as the time of day with the clock just below it. You can even set the time zone if you have divisions of your company in different areas. Then there's a checkbox to designate if you want your workers to be able to complete this form after the due date. If this is unchecked, once the due date passes, the form will no longer be available for them to sign and it'll show up in the Miss section of your safety monitor. Finally, at the bottom of the window, there's a drop-down menu that allows you to choose how often you'd like this scheduled form to repeat. You can even choose Custom to create a custom frequency. The next step is to select the form or resource that you want to schedule, then the location profile and the worker profile that you'd like to assign to this form. Notice that you can assign this form to any location if you choose to. This can be handy for things like vehicle inspections where you may not know ahead of time which location your driver may be working at. You can also select any worker, which can be helpful for things like hazard assessments, where they need to be filled out every morning, but may not be the same person filling them out every day. Keep in mind that you can select any location or any worker, but you can't choose both. There's also the option to use Select All to select multiple workers. This option selects all the workers in the list, so if you were to search by name or title, it does take that search into account when you select. Now you can click Schedule to send the form to your worker, or if the form needs a follow-up or approval signature after it's done, then you can select Schedule Additional Signatures. On the Signature screen, you can choose the workers that you need signatures from. Now that they've been added to the scheduled form, you can select the date and time for each individual scheduled signature. This window allows you to select workers with no mobile access, but keep in mind that they will not get a notification on their device without mobile access, so they'll need to be contacted in another way. Finally, I can select schedule and my worker and supervisor will get a notification about the scheduled form and signature. Admins can also add scheduled signatures to any forms in their safety monitor. Select the signature button on finished forms or the menu button on scheduled forms to request an additional scheduled signature. If you have any questions about your safety monitor or anything else in your PsychDocs account, please reach out to our award-winning support team at support at psychdocs.com.